So Nissi have sent me a macro focusing rail. So in this video, I'm going to unbox it and give you my first impressions of it. Hello, my name's Stuart Wood and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Nissi macro focusing rail. This is the model NM180. You can get this focusing rail for about $130. So up front, Nissi have sent me this free of charge and I do get to keep it, however that won't affect my unboxing and first impressions. So let's quickly get this unboxed and have a look at what we've got. Now I have previously unboxed it, I've had it a couple of months now, so I did unbox it just to make sure everything was okay. But uh, yeah, that is our rail. We have a carrying bag, that is going to be very important, I will um, explain why that's going to be important in a minute. And then in here, we have our quick release plate for our camera. Very well packaged, I must say. Spots for everything to go in there. So if you look, nice packing. Came in one piece, um, so no complaints about the box or the packing with that one. So this is our focusing rail. It's very small, very well built. It's a full metal construction, so it's very, very well built. So the reason to have this rail is two main reasons. The first one is you can nail critical focus by moving the rail rather than trying to move the camera, particularly if you're on a tripod. When you're on a tripod and you're trying to move your camera around, it's very, very awkward. So that is a very welcome thing to have. So if you are doing a low light macro or you use the tripod for your macro, this can come in very handy. And the other thing as well is you can use this for focus stacking as well. Now, unlike my other slider, this is my video slider. This is completely different to that. That's for stills, this is for video, okay? This is the z Micro 2 slider. It's a motorized slider. And um, yeah, so I've seen some reviewers trying to use this for video. This is not designed for video, this one is. Now, talking about the z z are giving away one of these motorized sliders to one of my subscribers. So if you want to get your hands on your very own z Micro 2 slider, then all you gotta do is make sure you subscribe to the channel, follow me on Instagram, and then drop your Instagram handle in the comments below. We have a winner from the last Nissi giveaway. She has been informed of it and the package is on the way, but I'm not gonna inform you guys who's won it until I've got a picture of her using that uh, Nissi close-up filter. Anyway, back to the Nissi. So uh, yeah, so this is a nice little package. It's got little feet underneath it so that you can do a uh, uh, tabletop macro. Like I said, full metal construction. We've got this handle here, we can use a term which moves the slider back and forward. We have a, a, a knob on the other hand as well that we can use. We have a tensioning screw here. So we can make it tighter or uh, looser. And also, this, uh, this head also rotates, if you see there, look. It comes with support for Arca Swift Quick Release. So we have an Arca Swift Quick Release base here. And also what I thought was a really nice feature is the entire base of this is compatible with the Arca Swift Quick Release. So you can clip it straight onto your tripod if you have an Arca Swift uh, mechanism. Now, unfortunately, I don't. I'm currently using the Manfrotto Quick Release plates. Now these feet do unscrew. So if you want to take the feet off, you can do that. Okay, so I'm not going to do that. However, if I am out in the field, I will most likely take those feet off because I don't see the point of having them on if you're out in the field. Okay, let's pop that on there now. So let's attach the plate to the camera. That's nice. It's got a nice big rip on the, um, on the screw there so you can really tighten it up. That's nice, that is. Let's set up a quick little scene on our desk here and then let's see what this thing is like. So I have a little flower here. This is a Jaboa daisy that I've placed here and we're going to... Position our camera first. So your first step, obviously, is you position the camera to roughly where you want it. So when it comes to these focusing rods, what they're good for is uh, this. I'm going to turn on my camera. Then you should be able to see the EVF. And what you want to do is I want to set my focus to whatever magnification I want. So in this case, I want one-to-one -one magnification. So then when we're free holding, we'd move the camera backward forwards. And this is basically what this enables us to do. We can do that on a tripod. Instead of us trying to get the camera in position, okay, with a one-to-one -one magnification, that's very important to remember, okay? A lot of lenses like the MPE 65mm don't have a focusing ring, they have a uh, magnifying ring. So on this lens, you set your magnification. That's basically what I'm doing here. I've set my magnification to one-to-one, -to -one, 
instead of us losing magnification to get it into focus like what i'm going to do here now is we lose magnification just a, a little bit i mean it's not much instead of us doing that what we can do is leave it at one to one right let me just bring this down a bit so you can see a bit better so instead of us using the focusing ring now or trying to move the tripod into position we can just simply rotate this to get it into position there we go can you see that coming into focus now so instead of us fumbling around with our tripod trying to get into position and remember uh, a lot of this is going to be in the field as well even though we're in the studio we do this in the field so instead of you fumbling around in the grass or your bush trying to get your tripod into position you can just get it in a rough position and then just use this to rotate to bring it into focus so let, let's uh, let's take a, a picture there shall we so i'm going to set the drive mode to two seconds again that is simply because of my floorboard you don't have to do that and uh, let's take a picture okay so this is being lit by the lights from the studio now there's a nice little uh, gauge here you can see just there telling you where it is on the rail now the rail you can move the rail around 16 centimeters 16 centimeters on the uh, the measure here so what i can do now is i'm going to bring it back just so everything's just out of focus and then i'm going to stop down to about four bring in our torch to give a little bit extra light and this isn't going to be a brilliant image this is just testing out the rail okay okay and what i can do here now is i can do a quick focus stack so i'm going to take a picture just there i'm going to look at my gauge and move the slider by one millimeter and take another picture i will then move it again by another millimeter I'm mean, probably going too quick on there. Like I said, it's something we've got to get used to. And as you notice, I'm not actually looking at the camera. I'm looking at the gauge on the um, on the focusing rail. And of course, you can do quarter turns, half turns. I'm going to do some more shots of flowers with this rail. So we can now stack that in our software to give our image a higher depth of field using this focusing rail. As you're moving the rail forward and backwards, particularly with this handle here, it does move the camera around, can you see? Half of that is my quick release plate, to be fair. Okay, so if you had it on a proper Harker Swiss head, uh, you would eliminate that. So it does move around quite a bit when you're moving it, but again, you just align it when you're doing the uh, focus stack anyway, so it really doesn't affect you that much. That is the primary reason for having one of these is uh, nailing your critical focus when you're out in the field and it's very hard to move your tripod into position or focus stacking so here are some more images that i have done taken using this focusing rail So there are some images I've taken with the Nissi focusing rail. It's a very, very nice rail. It's very smooth. Again, it's not for video. That would be the z -Pon, okay? And uh, yeah, so far, so good. Again, I can't do a full review until next year because I want to take it out in the field with the bugs. And at the moment, being, being winter, there's no bugs running around. I can do crappy leaf photos like everyone else does, but <laughs> I don't want to do that. I want to get it onto... Uh, live subjects in the field in the early hours of the morning so i will be doing a full review for that that'll be a, like a long-term review the only thing i dislike about this rail is the grease that's inside it now don't get me wrong okay i know we have to have grease on this thing for it to slide nice and smooth however it gets everywhere okay now like i said before i only unboxed it just to check everything was okay for the shipping and that and in the weeks that i've had it I've had to wipe off grease off the desk twice and bear in mind I haven't used it so I'm wiping off grease off the desk twice when I haven't even used it yet okay so that thing I don't like but that's where this little bag would come on your handy okay because you don't want to put that in your camera bag without this little bag because you're going to get grease everywhere now I don't know if you can strip this down to um you know to clean it 
and regrease it because another problem I could see in the future is dirt and grit getting onto the um, the rail. The grease is going to hold it in place and it's going to start grinding and that. So I'm not too sure how that would fare up long term. Again, look out for the long term review when that drops. But I'm wondering if there's any way that Nissi could enclose this area so there's less dirt getting in and there's less grease getting out. I'm not too sure. I'm not an engineer, but there you go. That's my only complaint so far with this Nissi focusing rail. Like I said, I'm looking forward to getting this thing out in the field. So I am going to be putting this into my camera bag so I can give it a good for a thrashing out outside and see how long it lasts in my hands. I would like to thank Nissi for sending me this rail for review. But that is the unboxing and first impressions of the Nissi Focusing Rail. So far, impressions are good. Build quality is great. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comments below. And as always, I'll see you on the next video. So Nissi have sent me a... F <laughs> Hello, my name's Stuart Wood and welcome to this video. So in this video, like I s Why do I get changed around? around? One is to get critical focus while in macro, the other one is to use it for um, um. So this rail has two main So this rail has two main If you are doing uh, low light macro or you don't use a flash This could become, uh, this could Got no card, <laughs> no one is not working I'm bringing it forward <laughs> No one it wouldn't work so there are the images I've taken using this rail. No, don't pick your nose while you're presenting. <laughs>